Let's bring in Jeffrey Porges. He's senior analyst at Sanford C. Bernstein. Jeff, by the way, covers the stock with an outperform rating. Jeff, great to have you here this morning. Pleasure to be here, Carol. So big question, as Shannon pointed out, they definitely have a lot of cash. Yeah. Will, will we get a dividend from the company? Well, look, I think it's uh, most likely that we will get a dividend. It's going to be a landmark either way. If they don't put a dividend, as Shannon alluded to, they're really thumbing their nose at investors and saying they don't care what investors want. If they do put a dividend, it's also a landmark because it's the first time a biotech company will actually be paying out cash in that way rather than buybacks to investors. So what size dividend could we see from them? What are we talking about here? Well, it, it's interesting. We've done some work on this. I think most likely they'll shoot for where the med tech companies are. That's you know, companies like Medtronic that have moved out of their growth phase and are now much more sort of low growth companies. That's probably in the range of 2 to 2.5% 2 dividend yield. That means they're putting 20 to 25% of their cash into a dividend each year. I think that's what they'll shoot for. If they were going for pharma companies, it'd be double that. And I think that's too big a step for this company at this stage. If we don't get the dividend, Jeff, I mean, you've got an outperform rating on the stock. Mm -hmm. Would you say, I'm just frustrated with this company, time to change my rating, perhaps? Well, look, I think the value is there regardless of the dividend. And the company is giving a lot of cash back to investors. They've been spending three and a half to four billion dollars a year on share buybacks. And that's reducing the share count and giving a boost to EPS mm -hmm. growth. But that's probably not enough. Uh, I, I think the fundamental value of the products in the portfolio is still there regardless, but, but it'll bring a bunch of new investors into the stock if we do get a dividend. So is paying out a dividend admitting that we've got nowhere else to put our cash, we see no good acquisitions out there, we can't spend any more on R&D you know, to boost our pipeline or it's not going to do anything there? Is it, is it in a way maybe admitting that we're no longer this high growth company? Well, I think that's the, that's the sentiment that management has had inside companies like Amgen and many others in the biotech industry. I actually don't think that's true because they've been spending a lot of money on the buybacks and no one's suggesting that, that they're going to do a buyback at the same level and a dividend, they're just going to replace part of the capital use uh, with a dividend instead of the buyback. So uh, I think it's just instilling some discipline in these companies that have wanted to retain the flexibility. Instead, they're going to be locked into a dividend, and I think investors will feel better about that. Would you like to also see the company maybe do some more or do some acquisitions here at this point? Uh, look, the history of acquisitions for Amgen and for the industry as a whole is not that, not right. that attractive. Mostly they're value destroying. Uh, I think if they reduce their expenses, return more cash through the dividend and the buyback to shareholders, that would be the best thing for the stock. And do you think that the company outside of dividends and acquisitions, do they need to fundamentally change how they do things at all with their maybe R&D, make it more productive in some way? Well, what I would recommend is that this, this is a company that needs to focus. They have a broad portfolio of phase two and phase one assets, 13 or 14 different programs. That's a lot. If you compare that even to a Pfizer or a big pharma company, uh, that's a comparable number. They need to narrow that down, we think, to four or five really high value programs, reduce their spending and concentrate it. Just a few seconds left here. Kevin Chair has been the CEO for something like 11 years now. Are, are you happy with his performance? Oh, look, I think if investors look at the stock chart, they can't be happy with the performance. Uh, this management team um, you know, has been locked in for a long time. They've done very well out of the company, and yet the stock has failed to perform. I think investors are looking for changes. Do you want to see a change? Uh, look, I want to see the company succeed, and uh, if they can do some of the things, fix some of the product launches, improve their capital use, state, straighten out their R&D portfolio, then I don't care who's running the company, but that's what the sort of things we need to see. Great stuff. Jeff, thank you so much. Jeff Borges, senior analyst at Sanford C. Bernstein, of course, our own Shannon Petty Pease.